Shutterbug is a cryptid photography game. You'll explore a relaxing environment and try to get a good shot, making it even more believable with evidence that you can find in the world. It's gone from looking like this to this. And I'm going to go into some of the more specific development processes in this video. I have a particular passion, which is shared by many in the indie development space, for games which feature non-violent storylines and short, relaxing experiences. These types of games form an appealing alternative to the big budget action games that predominate the industry. Regarding the more specific themes included in this project, I wanted to focus on elements rarely seen that I feel represent a gap in the market. The main part of this was photography. There is a lack of photography centric games with the feature most commonly occurring as a side system or something to share to social media. There are, however, large numbers of people who enjoy photography in video games, some going as far as making whole art shows consisting of photographs taken entirely in games with this feature, hardly playing the games themselves at all. The game is being made for relaxation. Busy people without the time to put into a longer game and just want something to play that won't take too long and would be calming. Video games have been proven in a variety of cases to be an effective method of relaxation and the people who might need this type of thing are definitely targeted audience for Shutterbug. Ultimately though, it was intended to be a short, fun experience that would align with my values as a developer and make for an engaging portfolio piece. Next up, I'll do a quick playthrough and tell you what's going on at each stage, then we'll go into specifics. So we are on the main menu and we're going to do a little playthrough of the game. This is the main menu and the tracking page for Mostop. You can see all the different evidence on the side there um, that we'll be looking for. We haven't got any of it yet and also there's no photo yet for the cryptid itself. Here we are in the level. So we're just going to have a wander around and see if we can track down any of that evidence. Looks like it might be the footprints, just double check. And grab a quick picture. You can see that that photo we've taken of the evidence now appears in the handbook. And we'll look for some more. like the marking just double check yeah looks like it so grab another picture doesn't look like there's any sign of moss top just yet so we'll see if we can find some more evidence and there's the eggs and that's letting us know that moss top has now entered the area and we've got to track him down and see if we can get a photo for the sighting oh there he is so we can crouch to make ourselves harder to detect. You can see the stealth bar is the eye at the top. As it fills with red, that means we're becoming more detected. So we'll be very careful and try not to get spotted and see if we can get a good angle for a photo. That's one. And if he sees us, he will run away. So it's probably appeared somewhere else in the level. So we'll see if we can find him for an even more close-up shot. That looks like him there. So we'll sneak around, make sure we stay under the, under this rock and get a really close picture. There we go. So next up, it's time to choose which photos we're going to hand in. So you can sort through them here. You can see we've got our various pictures of the evidence. So that's what we're going to submit first. The marking, the footprints, and then the eggs. We'll submit those. And then we've got to choose a sighting. I think we'll go for this closer one. And then that picture gets scored. So there's a couple of different parameters first. That would be different depending on if the cryptid was in the photo or not. And then we go through all of the different evidence pictures, giving modifiers based on how many of those we managed to collect. see on the main menu 
but all of our updates, all of the pictures are there. We're getting little notes. We've learnt that the cryptid likes to be in both of those areas because we managed to get pictures in both of those areas. And you can see these are high score there in the middle. And then if we play again, we can see that all that data carries over and we can try and get that third bullet point. So let's get into some specific elements and some of the parts of the game that I'm most proud of. First up, a solid art style. I'm really pleased with how the art came out for, the, for Shutterbug. Um, for the environment, it uses hand-placed assets, which are all low-poly 3D models and a, with a flat, unlit color shader. The fact that they're all different colors makes it really work even despite the lack of shadows, which would normally provide the depth. Extra depth is provided by using the colored fog, which draws attention to the elements closest to the player. For the cryptid, it's a slightly different style, a billboarded sprite, which is a, a pixel art sprite. I did this for a couple of reasons. Firstly, that I felt I could design a better character using pixel art, but also to provide a bit of a contrast to the environment and make it really stand out as something that was supposed to be important. The visual thread of the pixelated cryptid was continued by also making the evidence in the world pixelated sprites, tying the cryptid in through graphics. Next, we're going to look at the stealth system. This is specifically the cryptid's perception value. First, we check if the cryptid is looking at the player, and if they do, if they have line of sight using the environment in way function, which basically is just a raycast that checks for any environments. If the, player, if the cryptid doesn't have line of sight, that value is saved. Then we move on to using the player layer mask and checking to see if that layer mask occurs within the detection radius by checking for the hit colliders. If the hit collider's length is not zero, so if there was a player in the way, then player is in range, which is true. If the hit collider's length is zero, then that means that there was no players in the range, and that's set to false. If the player was in range, the distance to player is saved using the vector3.distance function, and the distance modifier is 1 minus the distance over player divided by the max detection radius. This gives a value between 0 and 1. If the player is detected, then the current state of the cryptid becomes searching, and we check to see if the player is detected through line of sight. The detection timer is less than the detection threshold, and the, the player has been detected, then we can increase the stealth value. To do this, we, use the, we get the scalar value, from the stealth value and the perception value, which is the rate at which it should be increasing. We then use the detection timer and increment it. The UI manager is called, the instanced version of the UI manager is called to update the stealth fill amount according to that. If the detection timer is greater than the threshold, then the cryptid will leave and the detection timer will be reset. If the detection timer is greater than zero, but they haven't detected the player, then it will start to decrease. So this is just if the player gets out of range of the cryptid, then the value will slowly decrease rather than snapping to zero. And finally, if the cryptid is currently moving, then the detection time will be set to zero so that the cryptid cannot continue detecting the 